All right, y'all, what's going on, everybody? Uh, hope y'all can hear me. Welcome to Black Talk Live. Uh, look, I just came across some news that I really want to share with y'all that I really want to let everybody out there know about. Um, Chicago, Illinois might be enacting a certain type of purge. We are going to see. I got some... Um, some some uh video that I want to show y'all that I had pulled up to see what's gonna be the uh the outcome of all of the all of the stuff that is being said. Now if y'all don't know they have a, a safety act that they are trying to implement right now that's gonna be released on January first, uh 2023. And a part of it is they're gonna let out at least four hundred prisoners out of jail right now, no bond. No bail, rather. And um, it's, it's uh, because they want to keep fairness in the city between um, white people and minorities. But I'm going to give y'all my take on it after I play this for y'all and tell y'all what I think is really going on and what I think is, is uh, really about to happen. So let me let me uh, play this video for y'all. I just want to show y'all this. Let me play this for y'all. And let y'all hear what they're talking about doing. Starting in January, a new law will go into effect in Illinois called the Safety Act. Part of it eliminates cash bail for most offenses. Today, the Winnebago County State's Attorney says around 400 inmates at the county jail will be released. Under the new law, people arrested for many criminal cases, including battery, robbery, and vehicular homicide, cannot be detained no matter the severity of the crime. Unless there is evidence, they're a flight risk, and a judge can only detain someone for murder and armed robbery if there is a real and present threat to the safety of the community. Jay Hanley and other state's attorneys around Illinois are asking to tweak the law and allow judges to use their discretion in all cases. The Safety Act passed in 2021, and many Republicans have been trying to make changes to it, including Darren Bailey. Bailey continues to promise a repeal of the Safety Act if he's elected governor. It's a move that would be unlikely, even if he won, since it would require the House and Senate to flip and Democrats hold super majorities in both chambers. The bill's sponsors are saying the conversation around the Safety Act is not happening in good faith. I think if we're going to have conversations about public safety, then we should actually engage on the, the history of people like Darren Bailey who've done a really bad job around public safety. We will repeal the Safety Act and we will reinstate cash bail everywhere all across the state. We will repeal limits. We will repeal limits on pretrial detention for violent criminals. The bill was supported by the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus. It said this makes the justice system more fair for minorities. You can read more about the Safety Act on our website, mystateline.com. Okay, so as I said, um, they are thinking about taking out cash bail for criminals. You see what I'm saying? Because uh, they don't have enough money to post bail for themselves. So because they don't have enough money to post bail for themselves, they uh, continue to be locked up in the jails for longer periods of time. What they are trying to do is they are trying to push it back so that... Uh, Criminals can have a fair chance, can can actually get out within a certain amount of time and uh, still be able to uh, defend themselves in a court of law. But let's go into another video. It's going to explain what I'm saying a little bit further. Uh, this gentleman right here, just check this out. When a new Illinois law takes effect next year, it will do away with the cash bail system. In the state, meaning suspects charged with felonies, including second degree murder, aggravated battery, and arson will be released without bail. The counter signal reports the Safety Accountability Fairness Equity Today Act, also called the Safety Act, will end cash bail. It includes 12 non detainable offenses. Listen to what these offenses are because it is absolutely crazy. Second yeah. degree murder, aggravated battery, arson without bail, as well as drug-induced homicide, kidnapping, burglary, robbery, intimidation, aggravated DUI, aggravated fleeing and eluding, drug offenses, threatening a public official, all of which are non-detainable offenses. Think about what's happening in the economy right now in the world. A lot of people's financial position has never been weaker with record high inflation. You have everything is just going through the roof. 
Everything is extremely expensive, and now we're starting to see these job layoffs. The big question is, if all of this crime becomes no longer a detainable action, then why wouldn't people commit these crimes to survive, right? A lot of people are getting pushed and pushed and pushed financially. If you ever watch the Discovery Channel, when you see animals in the wild, they do whatever they need to do to survive. Why wouldn't it be any different in a city like Chicago? When the law takes effect, January 1st, 2023, criminals charged with the crimes mentioned above will be released without bail. The bail system will be replaced by a bail system that considers the offense severity. The risk of not appearing in court and the potential threat to the community if a person is released when signaling the legislation, Governor J.B. Pritzker remarked the measure marks a substantial step towards dismantling systemic racism that plagues our communities, our state, and our nation and brings us closer to true safety, true fairness, and true justice. Supporters of the measure say it's a step in the making the justice system equal and fair, especially for minority communities. Now, I don't agree with any of that. That's just my opinion. I personally think that it wouldn't matter if I was a minority and lived in a minority community. If I was a grandmother and I had young children and kidnapping was now legal and people could not be detained for it, I wouldn't want to be in that community. I wouldn't want to. All right. So I'm going to finally show y'all the last video so y'all can hear it from the horse's mouth, government officials' mouth about what they are planning on doing. So let's play this. As of January 1st, 2023, the following things will go into effect and people need to be aware of this. It abolishes cash bail for almost every offense. This includes, but isn't limited to, kidnapping, armed robbery, second degree murder, drug induced homicide, aggravated DUI, threatening a public official, and aggravated fleeing and eluding. Offenders released on electronic monitoring have to be in violation for 48 hours before law enforcement can act. They could almost drive to Alaska before we can even look for them. It denies victims their constitutional rights. And keep this in mind, businesses and homeowners, officers will no longer be able to remove trespassers from your resident, residence or your businesses. Someone could decide to live in your shed and all we can do is give them a ticket. You have to decide what level of force is required to remove them and whether or not it's legal. This is a massive threat to the residents of Orland Park, Cook County, and Illinois. All right, y'all. So as y'all can see, I didn't want to show y'all that video first because it came from TikTok. And we all know that uh, TikTok and, you know, most social media will fake something just to hype something up. I wanted to show y'all from the news outlets. I wanted to show y'all uh, CBN News has reported it. Uh, the news in Chicago has reported it. I want to show y'all this so that y'all can see that this is real. Now, my thing is, I want to give y'all what I think is going on with this. Uh, first of all, it's a messed up situation. Very messed up situation that we're looking at because um, you got uh, these people out here that commit crimes up there daily. I'm talking about on a daily basis, they commit these crimes and they commit very heinous crimes. And these crimes, uh, they already go unsolved as it is in Chicago. So now we finna put in a law where uh, the crimes can go even more unsolved. We finna uh, put in a law that's going to allow them to uh, skip bail at any point and uh, go about... Um, <laughs> just just go about their life like he said they could they could they could leave the, the country they can go to alaska and ain't nothing that the police can do about it because they gotta wait 48 hours before they can do or say anything about it and they call this fair to the black community they call this fair based on on racism that's how they they quote it based on racism that this is going to be good we lost about one. Look here, I, I don't know about y'all, but that sounds like a crock of bull to me. Because if you letting go of criminals, somebody somebody put it real uh good when I was reading it. They said you basically letting go of a bunch of King Vaughns. If y'all know anything about King Vaughn, uh King Vaughn was a flat out murderer in Chicago. They said he had an upwards 
of 10 people that he killed himself. You letting go of a bunch of King Vons back into the street out of prison, along with the ones that's already out there. You asking for hell on earth. You asking for a purge. Most of these people, now this is this is the point that I want to make. This is the point that I want to drive home to the people that's listening. Most of these people are poor people. Most of these people uh, inhabit the black communities. So now if you let these people back into the communities that they inhabit, these black communities that they inhabit, and they go back and wreak havoc on these communities, what is that saying? What is that saying that the Democratic Party really want to do in the background? Are you really trying to uh, look out for the black community or are you trying to inevitably harm the black community. And that's what I think is really going on. This is their way of dealing with the gang violence. This is the way of dealing with a uh, violence period that has been plaguing Chicago for many years. Let them kill themselves. Let them kill themselves. Now the thing is, if these gangs don't wake up, and see that uh, the, the problem that they're causing in Chicago is more detrimental to them than it is helpful to them. And they don't wake up and change change this around and notice that this law, when it goes into place, it, it, it's just not going to be one day, just like on the, on the movie The Purge. This is going to be year round. And they see the bodies dropping left and right, all their homeboys dropping at a mass level because they know that the police and the officials are not going to do nothing, nor can they do anything based on law. If they don't wake up and change it around, it's going to be a lot of black men and women, a lot of Latino men and women dead. They're going to damn near eradicate themselves in Chicago. And that's what they want. They want them to eradicate themselves. Now, the other thing that could possibly be happening is they want this stuff to go on. They want the crimes and, you know, saying second degree murders and all this stuff to go on so that they can prevent anybody else from partaking. Because they already know that, hey, if you if you get into a crime, if you, if you do a crime or something like that, you know, you're not going to be arrested, but you have to watch your back because it might be somebody else out there that's gunning for you. So the best thing to do is, you know, uh, to let this stuff go on and hope that it'll coil down on its own. But I don't think that's going to be the case because what's going on in Chicago is way deeper than any of us know. It's way deeper than any of us, you know, saying probably thought of and the situation, the, the uh, things that's going on in Chicago, especially with the gangs, is way older than a lot of us right now. So with that being said, I believe that the plan is to eradicate the black and brown man up there. And this is the best way to do it. Because, you know, you you don't have people talking about, oh, maybe we should drop a nuke on Chicago. Or maybe, you know what I'm saying, we should send the feds in. That's what Trump said last. Maybe we should send the feds in and have the feds, you know, uh, do their thing with them. Or maybe let them kill themselves off. This is the Democratic Party that's doing this now. But I just wanted to put that out there. I just wanted to uh, let y'all know. So y'all can see it. Y'all can actually go back and study. If y'all think I'm wrong about what I'm saying, uh, please comment below and let me know. But uh, yeah, go back and, and look it up on your own. Go back and, and see if you can uh, find out what this is all about and give me a little bit more insight. And I would more than happily appreciate it. So I can know what, the, what this is more about than anything. But anyway... Until the next time, this has been Claudia Lemons. You know what I'm saying? Let me show my name again so y'all can see it. Claudia Lemons. And I'm out, y'all.